I'm not ashamed. Why was the centurion's faith greater than all that Jesus had found in Israel? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse-by-verse -verse study of the book of Luke on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, turn to Luke chapter 7. We're going to be reading from verses 1 to 10. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So, Luke chapter 7, beginning at verse 1. Now, when he concluded all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. And a certain centurion's servant, who was dear to him, was sick and ready to die. And when he had heard about Jesus, he sent elders of the Jews to him, pleading with him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they begged him earnestly, saying that, the one for whom he should do this was deserving, for he loves our nation and has built us a synagogue. Then Jesus went with them. And when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends to him, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Therefore, I do not even think myself worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man placed under authority, having soldiers unto me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And those who were sent returning to the house found the servant well, who had been sick. In much of chapter 6, we had Jesus on a plain near a mountain, healing the people who came to him, and teaching them lessons from God that they needed to hear. He told them, that if they heard his words and followed them, then they would be building their lives in a strong foundation, which would ultimately lead to eternal life. If, however, they heard his words and did not do them, they would be like those who built their houses without a strong foundation, which would ultimately lead to eternal punishment in hell. Arriving now in chapter 7, Jesus completed his sermon and then came to Capernaum. This would seem to suggest that he was not too far from Capernaum, when he preached this sermon in chapter 6, although that conclusion is not necessary. If you recall from our study of Matthew, in chapter 4, Jesus dwelt in Capernaum after leaving Nazareth, and so that is a possible reason as to why we see him returning here so much. When he arrived back there, we find the story of a centurion's servant who was near death. A centurion is a commander in the Roman army of about 80 to 100 men, a century of men, hence why he is called a centurion. We have only studied this story once before in in the book of Matthew, in chapter 8, verses 5 to 13. If you go and reread that story again, you would notice some minor differences. So with that in mind, let's reread Matthew's account now and see if we can spot them. Now when Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, pleading with him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed, dreadfully tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but only speak a word, and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this one, Go, and he goes, and to another, Come, and he comes. And to my servant, Do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to those who followed, Assuredly, I say to you, I have not found such great faith, not even in Israel. And I say to you that many will come from east and west and sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the sons of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way, and as you have believed, so let it be done for you. And his servant was healed that same hour. So as you can see, the overall story is the same. There was a centurion's servant who needed to be healed. The centurion wanted Jesus to heal his servant. But since he felt himself unworthy to have Jesus step into his house, wanted Jesus to heal his servant from afar. Jesus did so, and the servant was immediately healed. But in the process of telling this story, again, there are differences. First, Matthew makes it seem that the centurion was the one who came to Jesus to plead that his servant be healed, while Luke makes it clear that the centurion remained at his house the entire time, sending the elders of the Jews to Jesus to request the healing, and then later sending his friends out to request that Jesus perform the miracle from afar. Was this a contradiction? No, for remember, the centurion was a commander. He was the one who requested the healing, but he did so through representatives. Even though they may have literally spoken the words, it was the centurion who was making the request. We speak like this today as well, so it is not a contradiction. Luke tells us that the man was near death, while Matthew merely says he was paralyzed and dreadfully tormented. 
Matthew's account does not preclude the man being near death, so again, this is not a contradiction. Luke also gives us a detail that Matthew leaves out, namely that this centurion had built the Jews a synagogue, showing us a possible reason for this man's great faith. So yes, there are minor details that appear different, but those differences can be explained so the stories do not conflict with each other in any way. So let's not let the skeptic shake our faith. As for this man's faith, Jesus said that he had not found so great a faith in all of Israel. Why? Because this man knew that Jesus needed only to speak the words and anybody could be healed anywhere on the planet. Up until this point in Luke, we have not witnessed Jesus performing a miracle like this. Yet here was this man knowing what Jesus had done in the past, having confidence that Jesus could even heal from afar because he was a man of God. And it was because of the centurion's faith that his servant was made well. We can have this type of faith today. We can have faith that prayer works, that it is effective. But ultimately, if God answers our prayers in the negative, that he still has the power to save us from sin and grant us a home in heaven. Let's all have this kind of faith. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord will only hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 7, verses 11 to 17, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.